My name is Ian McKaig. I'm sure you know this man, Mark Zikri. Uh, Mark, you and I go way back. Yeah, the Turkish prison. Uh, yeah. Actually, back to, to when I thought you were awful because you had stolen a project I was working on. Do you remember? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go tell me. A friend put me in touch with, uh, with Mark because I was working on a story, a published story about magic returning to the world, and um, I just loved it to pieces. And then this friend comes over with a script that damn it's on the same theme hmm. so give me his number you know we're gonna have it out on the playground and uh, I asked him to tell me his story hmm. and he did and of course the more he told it the more it wasn't the story that I was doing you know it's uh, it was science fiction and fantasy that was about all it had in common and he broke my heart hmm. and it just gave me characters that were I don't know people I knew people that um, were pulled in different directions hmm. and stuff yeah and uh, and that's it I kind of dropped the thing that I was working on. I went, do you need uh, any help here, Mark? And the next thing you know, I'm designing this guy's series of books and we're working on doing it as a TV show. What was yeah. it called, Mark? Magic Time, Magic Time, yeah. And that was great. Uh, we, you know, Elaine and I wrote the two hour pilot script and Ian started doing all these wonderful designs and then Thank he you. became my artist on the books and I sold it as a trilogy of novels. And, and it came out and yeah. did great and and it hit the bestseller list and then we did the audio books and then it sold to marvel comics that comic hasn't come out yet right. but uh we did the radio play right. and eventually you know, we're gonna make we're That's gonna right. get back and shoot it but you why know, we're still why are we still here trying to make this film after how long is it it's like it's over a decade yes it is right. it so is why? it is why i was i was in i was in short pants when we met and the uh uh, well, the reason is because, you know, the, the you and I both know that the studios and the networks are these big, ungainly beasts. It's like trying to move elephants around, particularly if they were anesthetized. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and it's just kind of like, we, ultimately, you get tired of trying to deal with them, and you just say it's less energy, more fun, and you get a better product if you just go directly to the source. And, you know, and since I have this knack of collecting incredibly talented people. You uh, do. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not weird. It's because, first of all, you have to recognize talent. I mean, the moment I saw what you, what you could do, it was like, well, okay, come aboard. Absolutely. Well, thank you. And but you do notice that it always started off stupid. I always want to argue with you whatever you're doing. No, serious, right? You come yeah. on. No. You're doing a Star Trek fan film. You're all excited <laughs> you call me doing the Star Trek fan film. I've just come off Star Wars, and it's like, that's nice. And yeah. as the words "I'm busy" come to my lips, <laughs> you start telling me the story. Yes, yes, and it and it was I, well. I knew. I mean, I knew that it would be great. And uh, why? Because there was a great, profound human truth in that story. And Michael Reeves came up with the initial idea. You know, Michael years, Reeves. Michael Reeves is working with us on Space Command as well. He's who's great, Michael? Great Emmy-winning writer, uh, writing books with Neil Gaiman now, writing Star Wars novels. Right. You know, amazing writer. And he was the guy who got me in TV in the first place. And uh, he pitched that to Star Trek when they were going to do it as a TV series in the 70s. When they're going to bring it back, it didn't get made because they made the movies instead. Mm -hmm. But I remember that story. And, and I changed significantly, but the basic heart of it about someone having a family and then, and then having this great loss, there was this great truth there. And mm -hmm. I always look for the emotional truth in everything I'm writing mm -hmm. because it's never about the gigas, all, all the gosh gee whiz stuff is fun, but that's not why we do it. Because Icing it, on the cake. Well, we've all seen the movies and TV shows where you go, well, okay, the effects were great, there was no story. <laughs> and so those are forgettable. So that emotional truth, right? Yes, yes, of course. Here we are now with a brand new project. We are. I have my own film that I'm getting ready to go off and direct. Yes. I get this call from Mark. I'm doing Space Command. Yes. Sure you are, Mark. <laughs> so what's the truth, Mark? Why am I here? Why have you caught me again? What is the thing? Well, whenever I'm writing anything, it's like I'm on a fishing expedition or a hunting expedition. I'm looking for the meat, the truth. The, I'm stalking my prey. Mm. And, I'm f and I know it when I find it because it's like, oh, there's the great truth. There's, there's the meaning. There's, there's the thing that I've experienced or I live, I've lived through that I'm putting through this science fiction lens. And uh, what is it for this show? For this show, it's the characters. For, for this show, it's this, these people. It, and for each character, it's a different journey. I mean, it, a lot of it is about is about loss and trying to find what you've lost and get it back. A lot of it is trying to live down some terrible thing you've done or or live up to something that someone you love did and, and you're in the shadow of that person. A lot of it is just trying to find who we are and how we have a meaningful, compassionate mm. life. Mm. But you know what you said about collecting talent? Yes. Okay. So. You collected the people in this story the same way. Yes. It's a weird collection of people that are hanging on to each other the yes. way that you've hung on to your group as well. Yes. And and that really appealed to me because the band of brothers, mm. you know, completely echoed, yeah. ironically, yes. by the way you're doing it. Yes. You know, yes. here we are on this spaceship that, you know, it's kit-bashed together, but look. 
look at it. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Here you are financing it. How? By kit bashing together money by going directly to the audience. Yes. So it's something true. about that yeah. is, is, is the opposite of the experience of working on a big production, working in a big studio. It's back to being in the garage. Well, I can, I can tell you what that's about. A lot of Hollywood is arrogance, is cynicism, mm -hmm. is just empty values, showiness, materialism, all this stuff. And there, there's also a great Hollywood, too. But I stand for the exact opposite of all of those values, since down to, down to my core. And it's and so in my writing, in the people I gather around me, it's authenticity, it's heart. I mean, I think that love is more powerful than evil, is more powerful than fear, is more powerful than all the people with the guns in this world. I think lo love is powerful. Yeah. And so that's what I write about, that's what I talk about, that's what I, what I live for. And uh, I learned years ago to act on my better impulses. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I don't know if I ever told you this story, but once when um, I decided to make the jump from animation to live action, because I was the god of animation, as you know, I wrote for Smurfs and all those shows. And, uh, and then I'm gonna write my spec screenplay. So I went to UCLA to write and my screenplay. And uh, so, because they didn't have cell phones back then, they couldn't reach me. So at the end of the day, I would go to the art building and I would just check in with my voicemail on my answering machine. So there was a girl on the other phone, at this phone bank, she was a student. And she was calling friend after friend after friend. It was a week, a week and a half away from the end of the month, and she had run out of money, and she was calling her friends to see if they would loan her money for food, right? And, and so I finished my call, and I took a few steps away, and I was at that crossroads where I could either just keep walking, which 99.9% .9 of the people would have done, or I could do something about it. So I pulled the check out of my wallet, and I wrote her a check for 50 bucks, and I walked back to her, and I said, listen, you don't know me, but I couldn't help overhearing. And I just wanted to take this, and I've had hard times in my life, and pay this back when you can. She said, oh, no, I can't take it. I said, no, no, please. So I, I gave it to her, and all my friends said, oh, you're a fool. You're never going to see that money again. So the end of the month came, and a day or two later, an envelope comes in the mail. And inside is a check for 50 bucks and a note from this girl saying, that, you know, you've given me back my faith in humanity, and there's a picture of her with her two little girls. Oh, wow. <sighs> And I was so glad that I had acted. Mm. And, and so she had given me the big gift, not mm. me, her. Mm. And from then on, I realized that I need to just jump, just jump. Every moment I've got one of those impulses, just jump. And so I gather people around me, I help people, I do whatever I can. Mm. And in my work, I do that too. The very, the very cool thing is sometimes you do have to just leap empty-handed into the void like that. Well, Ray, and just yeah. trust it's going to come back to you. Well, That's Ray, the way it works. Well, Ray Bradbury said you jump off the cliff and you build your wings on the way down. Ah. You know? Oh, and, yes. But also there's another, there's another um, uh, parallel to that, which is you see someone else jump off a cliff, you jump after them, grab them, build wings. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that's another way of doing it. Mm -hmm. and now, now you don't do it to, the, to where you all crash on the rocks. You know, I mean, you have to be smart. You, know, you can be eaten alive by that kind of stuff. I think that's important. But you do have to know what you're willing to sacrifice. Yes. Right? And then really be willing to sacrifice it. And if not, do something else. Yes. But we're doomed. We yeah. have to do this. Well, when I, when I was making the Star Trek episode, my mantra to myself was, I am made of iron and nothing will stop me. And mine <laughs> is, I have wings of steel. You cannot harm me. Well, there you go. Yeah, so there. I'm pretty good. So you are. Go and do likewise.